Hi everybody and welcome to Bearcat Insider. It's the latest idea from PilotPointBearcats.com. Uh, what our goal is, is to let you know what's going on in Pilot Point Athletics and let you meet some of the fine athletes that we have here. I want to introduce to you my co-host, assistant coach Travis Marsh. And is that about accurate on what our plan is to do? Yeah, Chance, I think, um, I think it gives us a good way to connect with the viewers um, in a way that they're, they're used to seeing a social media post or a picture, and we're able to get a, give them kind of a live look, uh, and so to speak. Um, and really, things that we're going to try to do, not only is it present day stuff, but we're going to try to get some pilot point history involved and try to, try to kind of recreate uh, you know, the magic that's been here forever and, and show it in a new way that, that everybody will feel comfortable and they'll really like what they see. Okay, since we decided to start this show in February, um, we're going to get right into the basketball playoffs and uh, Coach March is going to tell us about that. Uh, well, the, the girls have concluded the regular season. Uh, it concluded last Friday night in Collinsville. We played a second and third game with the uh, Gunner Tigers, Lady Tigers. Uh, we ended up losing the games. We had a third place finish in district. But the awesome thing about that is it ends, uh, from what I've heard, is a 15-year playoff drought for, uh, for the Lady Cats. And so it really, really is good to see them back in the playoffs, back in the postseason. Um, I think it's really started something good. We had some, some good young players come through uh, this season, and I think we're really set up for kind of some um, sustained success. Um, so the girls, they finished the year at 6-18, and 18, uh, but the record's deceptive because they had a 5-5 five and five finish in district. No matter the outcome of the game, it's still just such a good, successful season um, for the Lady Cats. I'm, I'm really, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to see that program back because of, uh, you know, whenever I went through school here, uh, and I know that's what everybody wants to hear about is everybody else's glory days. Um, but from, uh, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s, we had some awesome talent come through here. Um, and, and I really enjoyed kind of seeing the, the tail end of Cassie Darwin whenever she was here um, and how successful those teams were. And I'm glad to see the Lady Cats are back on track uh, to where, you know, maybe we're going to see some of those same, uh, you know, legends come through again. Um, on the boys' side, um, I know for sure we're in the playoffs. There is still a scenario that exists where we could either go third or fourth uh, in district. Um, most likely we're going to end up with Van Austin in the first round. Um, but, you know, if the seating changes, then that could change. Um, but we finish tomorrow night uh, here at home versus Whitesboro. Uh, it's a Monday night game. Um, and so really excited. Hopefully we can finish the season strong. Kind of go on another run like they went on last year. Um, at, the, at the end of the season, they got hot at just the right time. Ended up going a couple rounds deep in the playoffs. And so that's exciting to see as well. The game was originally scheduled for Tuesday. Why was it moved to Monday? Uh, coach Price, he got with the, uh, the Whitesboro coach, uh, Coach Sluter, and uh, Coach Price really wanted our, our fan base and our fans to have the ability to, to be free to go support the Lady Cats for that playoff game on Tuesday night and not have to worry about a boys game here. So uh, really good looking out by Coach Price to try to take care of the Lady Cats program and, and take care of his own program as well to make sure we didn't split our fan base. Okay, that concludes basketball. This week was the last round of superlatives for football. And we had a couple students this week named to the All-State team. What can you tell us about that, Coach? Well, um, you know, we're always proud of all of our athletes, of course, and, and we're always proud of all of their accomplishments on the field and off the field. But uh, Javon Bruce and Connor Lynch are, are two that uh, have been able to obtain uh, All-State status. And so uh, this week uh, was Texas Sports Writers Association. Uh, they, they released their All-State teams. And so uh, Javon, he was able to uh, be an honorable mention linebacker and running back. So that's pretty cool to be a, a two-way player on an All-State team. Uh, it's an indication of how special he is. And then also previously, uh, right around, I guess it was first of the year, the Padilla Poll released their All-State team, and he was a second team running back. And then uh, Connor Lynch, uh, affectionately known as Biscuit, um, he was a Texas Sports Writers Association honorable mention linebacker, and he was also with the Padilla Poll. He was a first team linebacker as well, and that's a 3A All-State. Um, and so we're really proud of both of them. Uh, and, you know, that's a... It's hard to spotlight two kids when you have so many that are that are, are really good, and everybody works hard and everybody has has production, and so uh, you know those two they got spotlighted and, and they got selected, and so we're we're extremely extremely proud of them. How's that selection made? Because anyone from Pilot Point goes over that list, they're going to have opinions on who or who wasn't on that list. Well, absolutely, and uh, you know the the thing that we can do as coaches is we nominate them. Uh, and, and we nominate uh, as many of them as we can uh, because we don't want to do wrong by any of our kids. We don't want to be the, the judge and the jury, so to speak, on who's going to be All-State and who's not. And so we nominate them all and let, we let those guys sort it out. 
And so, uh, you know, we fill out a form, we pull their stats from Max Preps, and then we, we send it out. And uh, we let the voters do their thing. Um, and so the Texas Sports Writers Association, it was the sports writers, um, you know, that are members of that association, and they're also the voting body. And then the PDA poll is, uh, is a coaches poll. And so, uh, you know, we got a vote. And so naturally I voted for all of our kids, but then, you know, I was able to, to pick other kids throughout the area, you know, that, that had strong showings. Um, the kid from Grandview that was the, the you know, all-state MVP and this and that, well, of, of course he, he got a vote from us because he's deserving of that vote. And so you're able to see their stats, you're able to see all those things to make an educated decision. Uh, with the Padilla poll, but um, Texas sports writers and then you know you have the Associated Press that we didn't have anybody on which I was kind of shocked by. Um, you're kind of up to your representation of what you know bigger market newspaper covers your games and so uh, you know not to, to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that but you have you know Reese Waddell who's the guy who covers the Denton Record Chronicle. Um, we're almost up to um, the way that we're portrayed by him. And thankfully, I feel like he does a really, really good job. Um, he's always in contact with us. We always have great write-ups in the Denton Record Chronicle. And so I feel really, uh, I guess you could say, blessed that we have such a good reporter that covers us uh, in Reese Waddell from the Denton Record Chronicle. Okay, now on to baseball and softball. I know they've been playing uh, their scrimmages the past few weeks, and I think the regular season's about to start. Uh, what do you know about that, Coach? Well, um, with those seasons just starting, I don't know much, to be honest with you. I've been stuck in the gym uh, with junior high basketball and JV basketball, and that's getting wrapped up. And, you know, with, without there's not much buzz right now because the, the real games haven't started yet. Uh, so February 18th, this, this coming Tuesday, um, the girls' softball, they're going to start with, uh, with a game at Sanger. That's going to be their first regular season game. And then the boys will start on the February 24th at Sanger and so uh, Sanger's gonna be the starting point for both teams um, but you know the the thing about those seasons is they since they kind of start in a weird spot with the end of basketball the start of track everything's going on with AG and FFA and everything else the start of the season is usually overlooked because it's tournaments and everything like that and so uh, it'll be more exciting as the season goes on and we get to district and we get to where we're in a Tuesday, Friday schedule and we'll really be able to keep up with them a whole lot better. Um, but, you know, Coach Kramer, he, he does a great job with baseball. Uh, Coach Ramsey does a great job with softball. And so I'm really looking forward to the progress that those, both those teams are going to make throughout the season and, and hopefully going into the postseason. Well, up to this point, Chance, you've kind of taken the lead on this whole deal, and so I'll take a little pressure off of you. Um, what questions since you know I am an assistant coach here and I'm, I walk the halls of the school, I'm in and out of the field house, all those things. Uh, do you have any questions or anything that, that you want answered? Um, and then you know this will lead into some future things, of course, but what do you got for me? I do have a question, and I have a question that most people out there have asked as well. When is the football schedule coming out? Okay, so it's finished. Okay. All right, we have a schedule, we have 10 games. Um, the district stayed the same. Now the order that we play the district games and the dates and home and away has all changed. But you know it's the same seven games that we're going to play no matter what. Uh, our preseason schedules filled out. Our scrimmages are all full, um, and so it's all in place. Um, but we're not going to post anything official until after the superintendents meet. Okay, and so. What is that? Uh, it's going to be late February, um, so we've already had a football district meeting. Uh, we had it the day that realignment happened. Uh, we set the schedule and all that, but all of that is in pencil, okay? Um, and then when the superintendents meet, uh, it becomes final because um, really the, the head coaches and, and everybody that's representing their schools whenever we meet and decide the schedule um, is kind of an unofficial process until the superintendents say, um, yes, that, that's what it is. We're going to go with that. Uh, they have the final say. And so uh, it's all finished. We're just waiting on it to be finalized. And as soon as it's final, um, you know, we'll talk about it, and I'm sure that we'll come up with something. Um, but until then, we're just going to be on pins and needles. So where I and other people out there have seen other teams posting their schedules, you guys are just holding back for the chance that something did change, and then we have a to have a redo and reschedule it and, and re repost it and then have, have to make a correction. Well, from previous experience with you, whenever I've given you incorrect information, uh, you get frustrated. 
And so I'm really just trying to save, you know, our friendship here. I understand. Um, you know, because I think how many times did I change the start time for us in Brock at Pennington? That that I do remember that one, and that's, so it is wise that we probably yes. wait. Yes, and so I want to wait until we have, you know, it's set in stone, and and that lets everybody set their calendar, and it it reduces the amount of angry texts that I get from you. So end of February, mark your calendar. So Chance, where do we go from here? What can we expect the next time that Bearcat Insider hits? Uh, hits the shelf, so to speak. Well, what I'd like to do is hear from the people out there and know what they would like for us to do and what would make them more inclined to watch. Uh, in the comments below there, you can uh, type in some questions because that way we can have more stuff to have uh, Coach Marsh answer. And then also any suggestions you have on who we should talk to, what sports we should cover. Um, I know we didn't talk powerlifting today. We need to get into that. We got track coming up. And we do have some big plans as far as the track meet here, which is on what day is that, Coach? Uh, the track meet here is going to be February 24th. That's going to be a Monday. And then the Thursday after, which I think is February 27th. Okay. Um, and so that will be exciting. It's always fun to have events at home. But you know, going back to what you said, it, it, the part of this that excites me the most is the history part. Um, I don't know if that's because I'm part of it. Uh, which is sad to say, it means I'm getting old. But you know, it, it's the history of this place and the rich history that's here on on both the girls' side and the boys' side. There's a lot that's happened in Pilot Point's uh, you know history over the years that is really really fun to talk about and sit down and you know uh, you were talking about the viewers' choice and things they wanted to see, one you know what questions they wanted to ask. Um, you know, my brother, he, he lives in Philadelphia, and he came down for the holidays, and we like to sit and talk uh, about all things Bearcat because of how close both of us are to the program. And, you know, we talked about, well, we talked about it. I asked him, you know, okay, what's one of your all-time favorite Bearcat moments? You know, and I don't remember his answer right off the top of my head, but I know whenever he threw the question back at me, um, one of my favorite Bearcat moments I remember when it, being in bleachers whenever I was, you know, 12, 13 years old in Salina. Uh, I think it was 1996, and uh, Austin Wigman, old number 11, led the big comeback in the fourth quarter and came back and beat Salina uh, with that storm rolling in. And, you know, I, I just I think that's so awesome, and it's something that, you know, that we didn't win a championship there. There's no ring that shows that that game happened or that it was uh, near how awesome that game really was. But it's something that's just embedded in my mind. And then, you know, I think about um, kind of a play that's even smaller is uh, Chris Franklin, old Sugar Bear. Uh, they were playing Boyd. Um, and I just remember him catching a, a simple stop route and then just hooking it up the sideline and scoring a touchdown. And, you know, that play's not the greatest play in Pilot Point history. Um, you know, in my opinion, Sugar Bear's one of the greatest players in Pilot Point's history, but that's just a play that really stuck out in my mind. Um, and so it's things like that that, that I, would, uh, I would like to see the, the interaction. And, and, you know, maybe that's something that they might see us walking around town with a camera asking people. You know, who knows? Y'all better stay on your toes. Okay, but Chance, what's, what's one of your favorite Bearcat moments or, you know, something out of Bearcat history that just kind of sticks out to you? Um, it's not a moment. It's a little less than eight minutes. Uh, when you consider that Adam Mendoza won four consecutive state championships in the 800 meters, that is truly a record that cannot be beat. And the best anyone can do is tie that, and that's, that's impressive. That's the first thing that pops into my head. Yeah, and so things like that, um, you know, I want to have the interaction with the viewers that, uh, that they're getting content that's relevant and something that they, you know, maybe it's a question they want to answer. Maybe it's, uh, you know, something that's a hot button issue like, you know, who's the best quarterback in pilot point history? You know, that's something that's going to be controversial, and that's going to be something that, you know, would, people worked up. but uh, that's the stuff that makes it fun and makes it exciting. Um, you know, for the record, Coach David, since you are my boss, you're probably going to get my vote. Um, but, you know, it's something like that. that it's, it's, it's the fun of it. It's, it's all those things that are water cooler type topics, um, and, and that's kind of what I, I really want to be is Pilot Point Bearcat water cooler. You know, and, and you know, I want to get people that will sit in here with us and have that same conversation. I want to, I want to hear, you know, what's happening in the softball program, what's happening in golf, you know, and, and those things. And that, that's what really excites me about what we're trying to do here, and really just PilotPointBearcats.com in general is I feel like it's a great source of information that isn't readily available out there. Um, you know, it's it, the Post Signal does a, a great job covering as much as they can cover. Uh, the Dent Record Chronicle gets out here when they can. Um, and I think there's a lot going on that people would really, really like to hear about. Well, 
thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, it's kind of like working out on New Year's Day. The worst day is the first day. So I promise you we'll do our best to get better as we move forward. Um, we'll see you then. Go Bearcats.